Well, hey guys, welcome to the Bass Piper channel. I hope y'all are doing good this week, and uh, we're at hump day for uh, this week. It's Wednesday evening, and it's raining like cats and dogs here in Virginia, at least in the Hampton Roads area. And uh, hey, I just want to get on here just for a quick minute and respond to Mike, Philly Piper's um, uh, video that he may, and he was asking the question about how we store our pipes and tobacco and that type of thing. Mike, this video I just made basically for you, buddy. I mean, anybody else can benefit, that's fine. But I just wanna let you know what I do and what you know my belly button opinion is on some things that might help you look for a cabinet. Um, I store right now currently all of my tobaccos and, and my uh, pipes not all of them yet, but they will eventually be here in this cabinet that I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm still finishing up the man cave. We got the last chairs in today, and and uh, my son's got to finish up a few things for the around the fireplace. I told you earlier we had to move the mantle and move the TV and all that mess after we already got it set around Christmas time. And um, so, and we got the little closet area that I'm going to have the little dry bar, so to speak, in there. But uh, we're just about done. But anyway, in fact, Mike, if you look in my videos, go to my videos and look about, I don't know, about halfway down around Christmas time, you'll see a man cave tour, part one, part two, and it shows you the cabinet that I use. What I use, Mike, is the, uh, I took our old china hutch that we had in the dining room. We got rid of our dining room and we made another bedroom study slash bedroom, whatever you want to call it. And so we got rid of our dining room furniture, but I kept the hutch. And the hutch at the top had the lights at the top, you know, and had the little glass trays and the light shines down through all that. And then on the bottom, underneath I had pull drawers and then underneath that I had cabinet doors. So that's what I'm currently using to store all of my tobacco on the bottom and even one side of those pull drawers, I'll put the little one ounce jars of tobacco, different things that I'm trying, and they fit perfect in, in that drawer that I can label everything and slide those in there. What I do for my pipes is I use the glass where we, my wife, Davia, used to keep all the china and stuff. All that's out of there, and now I've got a display area. I've got three levels to display all of my pipes. I don't have them all in there yet, but I will, because I'm taking time to order those little, little leather, little, I call them pipe couches. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They're like, they look like a little, little couch, little thing you sit your pipe in. I tried all kinds of little pipe holders and stuff, but especially for the big pipes, these little couches are great. They're about 10 bucks a piece. So, you know, if you need 40 of them, do the math, it's 400 bucks. So, um, but a little at a time, you can have those and they fit any size pipe, whether it's small, medium, or large, or, you know, Boswell's jumbo pipes. But um, what I did is I just used a, like I said, my hutch. Uh, instead of throwing it out or giving it to the uh, Salvation Army or the outlet, I uh, took that and it's worked great. In fact, I even got a little lighted cabinet so my pipes light up, you know. And, um, but you do what you want, and guys that are watching this do what you want. I mean, this is what Bass Piper does. Um, the reason why I went with that is simply this. I, too, was finding a hard time finding decent cabinets. When I started three years ago getting back into the pipe hobby, and I was lurking everybody and just, you know, watching videos, I, I learned about Boswell and... Uh, when I went on his website, they used to carry cabinets. I think they were, I think they were 36 and 48, or they might have been 24 and 36. Uh, count nice pipe cabinets that you'd hang on a wall, and uh, they were made by, uh, I believe at that time, an uh, an Amish man, and um, they were nice looking, you know, quality cabinets. But they were like three to four hundred dollars for these cabinets, and so um, 
To make a long story short, I think the man ended up dying or they ended up not buying any more from him because his cost to JM was so high that JM didn't have much room to go, and that's what's jacking the prices up. When my wife and I went back in 2019, I believe it was, I'm rocking and this camera's moving, so I apologize for that, guys. I'm trying to get up. There we go. Let me look down here. No, I'm right here by the leg. That's why it keeps moving when I rock. How about that? Well, Bass Piper, if you stop rocking, you wouldn't have that problem. I know. There you go. Um, <clears throat> Dan had one in his Chambersburg store, one left. I think it was a 36 count. Beautiful cabinet. I mean, you know, Amish furniture quality. And, uh, but uh, I think JM was going to knock 50 bucks off of it. So it took it from 350 to $300, something like that. I mean, he had to still make a little something on it. But I walked out of there without it because I'd already bought two pipes and tobacco and a lighter. So, you know, I was kind of spent uh, to throw another 300 bucks on a cabinet. And so the last I heard from Dan a couple of years ago, they were trying to find somebody else that maybe would make them out of pine or something a little cheaper and they could offer some more, but they haven't done anything with that yet. So sorry for my hand going in. There was a bug flying through there. But um, I, um, I just started looking around and I too went on the unique cabinets or dis designs on Etsy and the ones that I saw there, you know, I, I don't know how the quality was on those. I know Matches had one of those cabinets, and I think, uh, um, oh, what's his name over there? Pipe Nook. Now, his, my, his, his name's going to slip my mind. But anyway, I know he's picked up one as well. I think they're like eight fifty for the cabinet. But I'll tell you what, just for um, Eddie Gray, I'm sorry, Eddie, I forgot your name, buddy. Um, Eddie Gray's got, uh, got one as well. But I'll tell you, you might want to take a look if you're interested in like a nice, if you got room in your home for like a little china hutch. Here's another suggestion is a nice curio cabinet. And you, you know, they got different levels and they even have lights in them and all of that, that a lot of ladies or whatever you want to display figurines or whatever in, they make a nice, a nice display cabinet for your pipes. Um, and I don't know, you know, in Philly where you're at, if they've got it. But I know here we've got the um, um, different f lower cost furniture stores. Uh, Haynes has what they call the dump. Um, and a lot of times you can find some decent prices on stuff like that, hutches or curio cabinets. Uh, and most of them are good quality made things. And you're not, it's not costing you an arm and a leg for maybe one of them. I mean, you're going to drop a few hundred dollars. I mean, that, that's just natural. Um, you might go to some of the outlets or Salvation Army type stores. Um, those kinds of things that thrift stores that somebody's getting a, giving away their, I mean, their whole dining room suit. And you can just buy the hutch, you know, put a little old English on it, maybe spruce it up, polish it up, and there you go. And you pick it up for hardly nothing. So, um, and now you've also got space for your pipes and space for your tobacco. And of course, it's like everybody, guys, you know, I mean, we got to stop somewhere. Uh, you keep buying, but you're going to fill up that, you'll have six cabinets filled up before long, you know. You got to know when to say time out. And, uh, you know, when I, when I deplete some of this, I'll buy some more tobacco. Uh, it's cheaper to buy tobacco than to keep buying four and five hutches and cabinets to put your stuff in. But anyway, um, I just wanted to share that with you. But I, I did a video, just a snapshot video a little bit of my man cave under construction, and I show my hutch. And um, like I said, I hope this helps you to give you some ideas about things. But the curio cabinets are great. Um, I know it's a pain trying to find decent pipe cabinets. Because the thing that I found out when I started looking at one, there was another big company or nice company I think it was called, called Two Cousins or something that used to make them. And, um, but everybody's gone out of business. And I talked to a guy one day at smokingpipes.com and he said, yeah, because I even talked to him about smokingpipes.com carrying them. He says, well, the problem is, he said, pipes and pipe smoking is starting to come back. 
the problem is, is all the paraphernalia is not coming back as fast as the pipes are coming back. So the cabinets, the accessories, all the little goodies that used to be out there in the 50s and the 60s, and the set, they're, not, they're not coming back. They're not making the cabinets and stuff like that. Hey, this might be a great idea for some of you guys that are pipe makers. I mean, just a base piper thought, take it for what it's worth. You guys are very crafty and handy and knowledgeable. That might not be a little side hustle to get into to make you some nice cabinets because I'm sure there's plenty of guys on the YTPC and ladies that might like to have one if they could find one within reason, uh, a nice quality cabinet. I mean, whether it's made out of hard pine or, or, or whatever, it don't have to be, you know, oak or something like that, you know, that's going to cost, you know, $500 to hold 24 pipes. But um, it could be a nice designed, you know, dovetailed type of thing where it's, it's decent, it's built, and good night, you could build one to hold 60 pipes, whatever. Uh, might be a little side hustle, a little side game for even help with your pipe sales. Um, because people that are buying pipes and all of that, whether they buy artisan pipes or buying Savinelli's or Joe Blow's pipes down the street, they got to have somewhere to put them. And um, I just found out for me, I spend too much for my pipes. I mean, let's face it, good pipes, they don't give them away. And you figure by the time you buy about five, four or five pipes, you didn't, you know, you didn't drop 500 bucks where you could have a nice cabinet, you know? Some of us, you know, are dropping a thousand dollars a pop, you know, within about two or three months on about eight pipes, and we didn't we didn't blow a thousand bucks on pipes. We've already got forty five other ones we can smoke. So there you go. Just move your money over to buy a nice cabinet one time. As they say, you only cry once, and then you got it for life, man. I mean, you know, do these are things you gotta kind of weigh out. With me, you know, I'm spending anywhere from 80 to about $260 price range for pipes. Um, I, you know, I haven't hit the three or $400 mark. I wanna, you know, one of, my, one of my dreams is to one day own a Costello and a couple of others that I'd like to have, but you know, I'm not gonna go crazy with them because I'm just not gonna drop that kind of money. I'm gonna be honest with you, you know, for a bowl and a hole in it. I mean, you know, and, and a stem and, you know, so, I don't care what it is and what it's made out of. I mean, some of these pipes, to me, they're just not worth four and $5,000. I mean, if I was Donald Trump, okay, that's golfing money. I'll go buy a $5,000 pipe like you buy a $100 one. But, um, and I don't mean that ugly, guys, by the way. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just telling you the way it is. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's good quality and stuff, but, you know, when is enough enough, you know? We can only perfect perfection, but so much we're human. So um, I don't care what name you put on it, but um, that's my belly button opinion, okay? Take it for what it's worth. But Mike, I hope it helps you, buddy. You know, uh, there's different cabinet combinations you can buy. And yeah, you're gonna have to drop a little bit of change on it if you want something decent, you know? I mean, if you just want something from, you know, the 10 cent store you get what you get you know what i'm saying uh so it's like anything you know you pay for what you get but um i hope this helps you i mean i, I hope it you know gives you some ideas and uh like i said i you know i try to i don't try to pay astronomical for my pipes but i pay enough that i like to take care of them i mean i'm the guy when i smoke a pipe it's cleaned I mean, it's put right back in storeroom condition. You know, I let the bowl try to build a little cake on them and stuff, but stems more and mortise and all of that's all cleaned out. And I mean, it's put right back on the shelf in its own little couch. And you know, I got a little bit of ADD or OCD, should I say, along with ADD. And that's just me. You know, I don't want to put, you know, $5,000 in about 40 or 50 pipes and go stick them in a drawer in a sock. You know, I mean, I, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. Don't get me wrong. But um, I would rather spend a little bit more money and take a hold on pipes and take a hold on tobacco and get something nice to display your stuff in. 
And I think you'd be a lot happier once you do that, if you've got the room and if you've got, you know, the money, of course, to do it. I, that's understandable. But, um, and don't feel bad because you can't and because you got to keep your stuff in a drawer in a sock. I mean, I, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, I don't have kids anymore. I'm not raising a family. I'm not a, you know, my, my, my son, I got one son, he's grown and off. So I got a little bit extra money like a lot of us on the YTPC, you know, that I, I can now, instead of spending it on kids, I can do, spend it on my hobbies. You may not be in that position, but maybe something like a value city furniture or something that, you know, you can buy some nice stuff that's not going to break the bank. Uh, to display your stuff. So if you need something small, you know, a curio cabinet would be cool. Um, it may not, you know, some curio cabinets have a little space on the bottom, you know, cabinets that you can store some tobacco. Um, but, you know, if you got a, you know, a buku load of tobacco, then you got to find other alternatives to store it, of course. All that's not going to fit in there. But anyway, I hope that helps you, buddy. I, uh, I'm just kind of giving you some ideas and kind of rambling a little bit. But um, anyway, I saw your video, and I thought maybe I could be a help. And um, like I said, check out my video several videos back. It says Man Cave something. I forgot what I put on there. And uh, I kind of give you an idea, uh, like I said. But it's all in what you want to spend. I mean, that's the bottom line. But you're right, they, it is hard to find. And I wish some of our guys in the YTPC that's knowledgeable, I mean, I, I didn't get that gift from God uh, to, be able to, to be a builder. I wish I could make a pipe, I wish I could do that. I got a little lathe you see behind here, a little jet lathe that uh, I think I've cut a few things on. I was gonna get into pin turning and all of that. So uh, eventually, and uh, every time I get ready to start something, something else comes up. But I'm not that crafty, and uh, I don't have anybody around me to teach me those kinds of things. Or shoot, I'd be putting out some cabinets, selling them on a YTPC, you know. But anyway, um, I'm hoping down the road here I can get into a little bit of leather working. And uh, I want to do that and uh, make some things maybe for pipes, related things. But I've been on Etsy, and I've been on other places and I mean they're starting to get bombarded with all that too everybody on the sun's making a pouch or making a you know a valet tray or, or whatever you know what can what can I make that hasn't already been made so um, anyway we'll just see how that goes but you guys that are very crafty and very knowledgeable with wood making my stars you can make you know if it's nothing but three or four of them and just sell them as an order comes in once it gets out there you know, that's a great little side hustle because I tell you, there are no cabinets, for my lack of words, worth a crap for the money that sometimes you're spending out there. Um, it'd be nice to have something like that, really would. But anyway, guys, enough of rambling. And uh, Mike, I hope this helps, bud. And uh, I've been wanting to catch up on some VRs and things and gall giveaways. But guys, I'm just trailing behind. You know, I, my plate's full right now. And um, mom is still in the nursing home and uh, she's going slow with her, with her walking. And uh, I don't know, I, I think her time will be up with the insurance before they really get her walking like she needs to be. But keep praying for her if you would. And uh, dad's doing fine here, he's adjusting well. And uh, my sister talked to me today and she's even thinking about trying to help mom and take her at her house. Uh, before we would have to make a decision maybe of putting mom in a nursing home for good. Um, so be praying for my sister and her decision as well. And, uh, you know, we just got a lot going on right now in life. Life deals with some blows sometimes, and it's our time. So uh, if you don't see me on the, on the YTPC much uh, in the next few weeks, that's why. We're just, just trying to deal with a lot of things. And, of course, I start the church uh, start my new pastorate at the church on the 11th, which is the Sunday after this one, Easter Sunday. So next Sunday, I start my first Sunday there with them. And so there's a lot of stuff going on right now in Bass Piper's life. But hey, it's all going to come to fruition. It's all going to get by. Well, you know, this too shall pass, as they say. And uh, God's in control. 
And uh, by the way, too, I want to do a little shout out to Levi Bennett while I'm here. I know I'm 19 minutes into this thing. Levi, I saw your video too, buddy. And I, I know you're trying to search God's heart for your life. And I know you've got a gall going on and you're thinking about selling all your pipes, all your tobacco. I mean, just a clean slate. Hey, let me say this. Let me give you this suggestion as a pastor. Uh, you do what you want with it. It's between you and God. Okay. I was at a crossroads too with this, with my pipe smoking. Even though I don't smoke a lot, like a lot of you guys, but you know, I've just come to grips with myself that I know it's not a sin. I know it's not going to take me to hell. Um, and being a pastor, you know, I'm not going to advertise it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's between me and God. But here's the thing I had to come to grips with with this. And of course, you know, you personally have to do what you have to do between you and God. But, you know, I looked at it as, you know, as long as it's in moderation, as long as I'm not causing a brother or sister to stumble, as long as I'm doing it in the privacy of my home and I'm not hurting anybody as far as that spiritually, you know, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with it, but that's me personally, okay? Um, but I would suggest this, you might want to at least hold on to one or two of your favorite pipes. You never know when you might go back to that down the road um, you never know just how you're going to feel six months, a year from now. Um, I wrestled with that for, for months and even years, Levi. And, uh, you know, these are things that you have to sort out for yourself. But I will, I will say, man, God bless you. And I, and I admire you, uh, for, uh, getting rid of your stuff if you feel God is calling you. I know, I know the Bible talks about being you know, above reproach, those kinds of things. But I can tell you, take it from a man that's been at it off and on for about 20-some years, um, you'll soon find out, especially pastoring, if God leads you in that direction. <laughs> your congregation and people that know the Lord or are supposed to know the Lord, um, trying to stay above reproach for some, you'd have to be Jesus. I'll just leave it at that. Because um, if they don't find pipe smoking, they'll find something else. And um, I learned a long time ago in ministry, you can't please everybody. You really can't. As a pastor, you'd be in a straitjacket. You'd be popping nerve pills, tranquilizers. Uh, I joke a lot of times, you know, because a preacher start drinking whiskey and smoking crack, you know, well, that's a joke, okay? But that's how you feel sometimes, we're human. But here again, Levi, I admire what you're doing, buddy. God bless you. I, I pray God's will in your life, I really do. And, and if God's leading you to get rid of everything, hey, man, go for it, you know? until God or you see things differently or God leads you differently. I was just sharing Bass Piper's heart with you with that. Um, I wrestled with it too. I mean, I never smoked cigarettes. I've never smoked cigars. I've only smoked a pipe and really it's only been like three years ago. And uh, so, you know, this is something, uh, there's a lot of pastors on the YTPC that, that smoke their pipes. Preacher Man Piper, Doc. You know, good man to talk to and bounce things off of. Uh, Spurgeon Piper, young man that, you know, has, a, I think, a Southern Baptist church that's, uh, he smokes his pipe and things of that nature. Hey, Charles Spurgeon, look him up if you don't, haven't never heard of him. The Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon, saw many, many revivals. Thousands of people got saved. God used Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon was an avid cigar smoker. A lot of people don't know that. In fact, they got a museum. It has, they have his last cigar, what was left of it, when he died in a museum. Um, so, you know, God can use you. Um, I mean, here's Charles Spurgeon. I mean, you know, one of the greats back in the early 1900s, uh, you know, that was uh, in the latter 1800s that was out there, I mean, holding major revivals. And um, he's got a famous quote that you can look up that he talks about going to bed at night and have, before he goes to bed and having a cigar under the Lord. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, uh, 
So take it for what it's worth. But anyway, man, I admire you. I'm praying for you, Levi. And uh, Mike, I hope, <laughs> I hope the cabinet thing works out for you, buddy. And uh, until we get back on here again, hey, bass piper saying relax. Have a pipe. And don't forget to reflect on the many blessings of God each and every day he gives us. And always remember this in the Bible. God used the weakest of us to do mighty things for him. And uh, he, he used people that people would probably think you're a degenerate or you just were no good. Or I can't believe somebody like that Jesus would use. Yeah. Look it up. Research it. And he used a lot of those kinds of people like us, even pipe smokers, to do mighty works for him. So with that, you guys take care. We love you, and we'll talk with you later. Bye-bye.